Jungle tumbles have never really been much of an interesting build, and it ain't really changing unless you intervene yourself. That's why today we are going to be transforming a jungle temple. Press start. The idea for this one has actually been suggested by a few guys under my transforming a desert temple video. Watch that one if you haven't quite yet, it's going to be in the left top corner right about now. But as such, I thought it would be fitting to go for the jungle temple next, since it's kind of, you know, thematically similar to the desert temple. Right off the bat, it kind of doesn't even look that appealing visually, not even talking about the redstone inside. So I would say, let's say, um, game rule, random tick speed, set this to 3000, and remove a few of those annoying trees around here. So they don't really look that great, covering up our entrance to this nice temple. So that tree's already gone, also those tiny little bushes, we don't really want them to be this obstructive right here. So I'm going to remove some of those trees and other bushes. And the thing is, we kind of want to create a path right here. So to kind of get an idea, like the concept across, that this temple has actually been built by like a civilization many many years ago and was actually being used for some stuff. And to do that, we'll need some coarse dirt, some cobblestone and underside. And what you need to do is just quite simply place down your path blocks, kind of going away from your temple. Mix in some cobblestone and some underside here and there. And you can go as far as you want, really. But um, the further you go, you want path to look more and more worn down. So we're going to have less and less of those blocks as you progressively get away from your temple. Now once you're done with that, you're also going to want to give it some overgrown look. So I'll be able to, to place some bushes alongside the path, which due to the bushes texture you will you'll still see the path under there, due to its transparency, but it's going to look like it's been a long long time since it's been last used. So that's one thing you want to do. And the next thing I would like to do is replace some of the cobblestone here with stone bricks. Kind of give you an idea as to... You know, to kind of bring the, the, the point across that it may have been an actual thing built by people and not just like, you know, some cobblestone thrown onto a pile that magically just kind of remains at its spot. So especially like things sticking out, you kind of want them to be just bricks, because like normal, normal pieces of cobblestone, they just wouldn't be able to, to stick out of the wall one meter and not fall down. And going by you know this logic, you also want the area behind those kind of sticking things to also be bricks. So those guys have a little bit more of, of support. A similar thing goes for those guys right here. And the next thing you can do is also obviously add some corrosion and basically stuff where you kind of break your belt to make it seem like it's it's been here for a long enough time for it to kind of be broken down by now. And for that you can also use stuff like slabs. Um yeah, there we go. You can also use stuff like slabs and whatnot. It's kind of differentiate between different heights. You can also use them to kind of indicate the level of broken downness of your temple. So that you can also do is not only use the slabs, but you can also use some stairs in some different areas like here maybe. Or like create some holes using those stairs and whatnot, or, or using slabs, that also works. Um, also, once again, stuff sticking out, you don't really want that. You want them to turn into stone bricks. As it really does add a bit of realism to this entire build. So just kind of go through the entire outside of your temple, mixing in some different textures of some stone bricks, some mossy stone bricks. Um, don't feel obligated to remove all remains of the cobblestone, you definitely do want some of that to still be in there. 
But mixing up a different, um, you know, a different palette of blocks definitely will help this temple stand out a bit more. And so my end result looks a little bit like this. We've got a path going out from our temple and some, and some stone bricks in there, as you can see. And it just kind of disappears off into, you know, into the depths of the jungle. Um, as I said, the things that stick out, you want those to be stone bricks, especially like some balconies like that. I do some indicating that this temple has been broken down by using stuff like those fences right here, those um, those slabs here and there. Let me um, do this here. Um, also here, there, all those different stuff and things kind of help and make this temple a bit more believable. But now that we've kind of, um, you know, completed the outside look of our temple, it's time to go inside. And once again, we're working with the assumption that um, the player is in adventure mode, cannot break blocks, cannot place blocks, just like last time. And, you know, currently I believe the treasure is somewhere underground. Why don't we put it on the top floor and instead make the entire floor fall down as the player enters um, this temple. I'm not going to use any glitches or things that aren't very future-proof to do that. I'm going to use a very, very vanilla way of creating falling floor. So, let me just remove everything that is in here and then I'll be back with you. And the aforementioned everything has now been removed. I have replaced the walls with, you know, the mix of cobble, bricks and whatnot. Now how do we make the floor fall down? Obviously, um, using something that can fall down naturally. Blocks affected by gravity. They are kind of limited to gravel, sand, concrete, anvils, and armor sensor entities, so that really doesn't count. But Gravel, gravel texture kind of does fit the aesthetic of this build right here. So if we head away to you now have gravel just kind of stay here and not fall down until we give it a signal to do so, well that would kind of be perfect, wouldn't it? And thankfully there's a very simple way to do that, namely using some signs. How is that? Well, see, you can put gravel on top of signs, however, as soon as you break one of them, the rest also disappears. The only problem right here is that, um, obviously, they drop those items, but we can do something really nice, that is, game rule, do tile drops, false. Now, if we do the same thing again, there's not going to be any items being dropped. So, this is already a very nice idea, I believe. But how do we activate our floor? Well, since the jungle temple has been introduced when tripwire hooks have been first introduced to the game, it would make sense to kind of give our nostalgia some honors and use the very same mechanism that was first showcased in such a temple. So if we take ourselves a uh, tripwire hook and some string, we can create a little trap right here that you can't really jump over unless you have like enough of a gap here. And as such, I would like to take some more of that and restrict the player from doing some weird parkouring over our tripwire hook. This looks fairly all right. I'm going to think about that, but for now, let's kind of see what we can do with that. As we've seen, um, a sign being broken makes the entire gravel place on top of it fall down. How do you break a sign? There's, there's a few ways. You could, for instance, remove the block that the sign is standing on. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to take a sticky piston. Um, we are then going to take our amazing 
piece of cobblestone, put a sign on top of it, and then using the signal from the stripwire hook being activated, we can um, make this piston be activated all the time, except for when the player steps on the tripwire hook, on the string. Now as soon as you step on it, all these signs are going to be broken. And this is basically perfect for us. Let me just cover up some things here. Now we'll put some blocks here and there, some um, slabs like that, some more slabs maybe here. Yeah, that's fine. Alright, so this, as we can already see, is perfect. So all we need to do is just fill our room with those signs. Also right there and here. And then also go off in this direction. We can cover that wall up, by the way. Just like that. And actually, let's use this here. And we can continue doing this weird sign formation for the entire room right here. Can then put some gravel on top of those signs. And as soon as a player enters this temple, the entire floor is going to fall down, the player included. Now as soon as you're done with that, don't forget to remove the string so that you don't accidentally trigger your floor and have all this progress wasted. But I have kind of um, redone the design of those stairs here, it looks kind of nice now. And the problem is, how will we jump up here? The entire floor is gonna be gone. Well, the thing is, we're going to be able to parkour our way up. Kind of make our way to, to, to this kind of stone brick bridge. Jump there, go there, and then go to the treasure. Um, so that's going to be, you know, the way to get to the entire chest and whatnot. But once you fall down, well, we're going to have a little labyrinth right here. Going to get that we're going to have to go through in order to to go up. And there's going to be a little twist to that, namely, obviously, you know, your entire Indiana Jones arrow dispensing action. And well, how do we t detect that someone's someone's standing somewhere? Because um, obviously this entire thing is going to be covered in gravel, right? So how do I detect that someone is on this precise block right there? Like this block right here. Well, the nice thing about gravel is when it falls down and, <clears throat> and meets a torch, it's going to break. It's not going to fall down. It's going to break right here and it's not going to be any gravel down there. Which means you could have like an observer um, be put right there with string on top of it. And then when someone walks on top of that observer, we're going to get some redstone output that we can use in, for instance, a dispenser with arrows right there. To make things a bit more interesting, let's make them poisonous arrows. Take a stack of those, do that. Um, now we're going to have to... Give me a second, let's light that up. Very well, um, that's our observer. Our observer can output signal into this block, which you can then read using a redstone line. We can make that redstone line go all the way over to our dispenser right here. And that's going to trigger the arrows. Do we have anything here? We do. So let's kind of just diverge in this direction and go there. Beautiful. So now even though the entire floor is going to be gravel, we are still going to have a nice observer trap right here that shoots us with some poisonous arrows. 
Can we avoid stepping on that trap? Maybe using some nice parkouring skills, but I am not sure. Or, you know, you could also drop an item right there. And drop an item as you exit as well. So that's some really nice, um, a really nice puzzle right there. Um, but then we want our player to be able to go to the end of this parkour or of this labyrinth. And then we want to make the player get some headaches as they don't have a key that can only be gotten from a chest that's going to be right there. Does that sound cruel enough? I think it does. So we're going to have a chest here to make things even more interesting. You could have it be a trapped chest and have something bad happen to the player as they open it. For instance, you could have this pathway be closed and open this one, forcing the player to go through the observer once again. But hey, how exactly do we make it happen that this passage is going to get closed once you open this chest? Well, you need to go underneath this chest with a piece of redstone dust right there, put your gravel back, then you're going to need to have a repeater right here set to three ticks, so we have to click it twice. And then another repeater right here set to one tick, don't click on it at all. You're going to have a block here, two pieces of redstone dust right there, and one piece of redstone dust right here. Those are going to power those pistons in such a way that this is going to extend two blocks up once you open this chest. And it's going to stay like that. So that is one part of the puzzle, but how do we make this drop down two blocks? For this, you're also going to have to dig down a bit. And then you're going to want to... Another one of those signs. Replace this with gravel, by the way. And um, you're going to have a... Sticky piston, or a normal piston. That also works. A normal piston right here. That's going to use the same signal that we have over there. So we're going to take this block, put it back in here. Have a redstone touch there. Power this piston. Then have a sign right there. Put it here. Put two pieces of gravel there. And there you go. Once you open this chest, not only this is going to close up completely, but also this here is going to fall down. So just to make it more believable, just replace all blocks with gravel so that this here doesn't stick out too much. Let's reset everything as it should be. It's gonna go there. You only need those two pieces of gravel to fall down two blocks. And what do we do next? We have to reset this one as well. Boom, boom. The problem with this one may be that this here has to be um, stone brick, but that's okay, that's okay. The rest is going to be gravel, just like that. Gravel here, gravel there. And the entire floor is also going to be made out of gravel and that's all supposed to be gravel exactly so now we have this little chest right there but we don't really have anything to put inside of it let's just kind of go a step further and say or rather see what's going to happen once we get past this parkour or past this labyrinth and get to the actual parkour stage Stop mixing up words like parkour and labyrinth. Come on, OP. There we go. This is it. That can be covered up as well. And what I think we can do is we have, can have a book hidden in there, in this chest. We can then take a lecture. I'm going to just showcase how it's gonna work right there. The player has to put a book inside of this lectern, turn it to a certain page, and then click on the button next to it. 
Or in fact, we could just quite simply dump it down and say, if a player puts a book inside of the selectern, for instance, one saying, hi, hello. As soon as that's done, we're going to trigger the entire parkour thingy. That's also possible. So, put your lectern down right here, you know, when you finish your parkour. <sighs> your labyrinth, and you go to your parkour. Hello, Mr. Skeleton. Going to have your lectern right here. Put a comparator right there. When there's no book inside, this is going to be off. When there is a book inside, it's going to be on. Following this, we kind of want a block to extend somewhere so that we can jump up some different ladders, some, you know, slabs and whatnot. So, I'm just going to get a piston, put it here, and say, once this is activated, we're going to have a repeater right there, and then a piece of redstone dust right there. So, once you activate the selectern, this block extends, allowing you to jump on top of it, like that. You'll then be able to jump on like a, maybe a ladder, right there. Seems as, is, is this still possible? This jump right here. Let me check. Okay, that's possible, then we can go up this ladder. We can have like a slab somewhere there. Then another slab here, and another ladder right there. And there we go, that's our parkour section, for which you need to get this book out of that one, you know, that one chest. There's no possibility to do this parkour without putting a book in here, I don't believe. Let me, let me, let me just check. No, I don't think it's possible. So let's let's write a little amazing book right here. For instance, um, hmm, what could we say? What could we say? Um, knowledge is going to open your pathway to the treasure. Call it ancient. Wisdom. Sign and close. Let's get a hopper. And using that hopper, put this book inside of this chest so that we don't have to open up this chest ourselves. Kill slash E type skeleton as well as spider as well as creeper as well as zombie as well as bat as well as item. Game rule, do you mob spawning, false. Right, we now have this book in there. What you have to do now is watch out for which blocks are going to fall down and which blocks are not. Um, as already seen, when there's a torch below a piece of gravel, that is going to break. Oh, it doesn't. Huh. Right, does the string break it? Yes, string does in fact break it. So that's alright, we can kind of fix this. But at the same time we don't need to worry about stuff getting um, getting blocked by those torches. However, there's one instance where this does have to happen, or where we do have to watch out for that. And that is when we have blocks up here instead of gravel. And there's a few instances of that. Just look up where that is and see. Hmm, we don't need any gravel here, but we do need gravel there, there, there and there, but it's not going to fall down. Okay? So, let's remove all those pieces of gravel, just, just a single layer. Like that. That's going to be replaced by the gravel falling down, however, as we've seen, there's a few blocks where the gravel won't fall down, and that gravel has to already be there before the player falls down. Here, 
We don't need to put any gravel here since we don't want any gravel on top of this chest, so that's perfect anyway. So we already have a way to get up here, but not quite all the way up. Now what could we do? We could say we're going to extend this block right there when a player steps on a pressure plate somewhere, for example here or maybe there. And to do that, let's have a redstone line below this pressure plate. Let us make it run into a pulse extender created by simply doing something like that. So when we're going to step on this pressure plate, it's gonna stay on for a while. And that is exactly what we need. We could even make it a bit shorter, like this. Very well. And now we can make this power line go into that piston. And we'll have to jump onto that piston and then onto the next one. So we could have another piston extend up, for instance, this one right there. So when we're here, we'll be able to have a ladder there. We'll be able to climb the ladder. Okay, what if we put this ladder here, for instance? We could go there. We could then go there. We could make the player go there. There. And then we could drop the player down here. Since we've replaced this block with stone brick, we'll have to drop down and put this gravel there, because there's no gravel that's going to fall down from the sky. So, to reiterate, once we step on this pressure plate, this is going to extend. After that, we'll also need this here to extend, exactly. Um, so we're going to have that happen right after this here. Where's this piston? This piston is... Um, there. That's it. That's our piston. So we're going to say take three ticks out of here, put a block there, put a piece of redstone dust here. That's that. Now once we finally get up here, I have put a trip wire right there, which will detect when a player walks by, and I also have a dispenser and a drop right there. The first thing that's gonna happen is the dropper is going to dispense all the treasure onto this table here, but then the dispenser is going to dispense some TNT. So what the player has to do is they have to quickly grab what they want, hide right here, wait for the TNT to explode, and then once there's a hole in here, make a run for it and escape from here. So to quickly just do that, let's go out there, put our its torch right here, put some piece of redstone dust right there, or actually we could do something completely different, we could say um, that's going to extend that. Whoopsie, we need two blocks right there, maybe, maybe, would that work? Yeah. So we'll have that, we're going to have a redstone torch right there. This is going to run into a comparator clock. Like this, so when this is gone, that's gonna keep dispensing some items right there. But we have to slow it down a tiny bit, tiny, tiny bit. For instance, like this here. Hmm, I think we need to do that, yeah. Now this is going to dispense a lot of items. But then the next thing that we want to happen is we want this to dispense some TNT and go there, go there, go there, give the player some more time to react. There, there, there. I think that's enough. Or you know what, let's, let's go for a few more of those. Here it is. And then it's going to dispense the TNT. Moreover, we could even put another comparator clock right here and in that way make sure that if it's needed we're going to dispense multiple pieces of TNT, not just one. However, there's one tiny change I want to make since this piece of gravel is going to drop its item and that item is going to normally stay there, meaning that if you walk onto this observer you're not going to get shot. 
Well, you're kind of not gonna get you. It's, it's wonky. I just don't want this item there. So what we can do is we can go underneath this observer and put a block there, put a piece of power trail there, make sure that it goes into the other blocks and not like into this piece of redstone. Put a minecart with hopper right here. Now let's go to the other side. And instead of this piece of redstone, you want another observer, a block, a piece of redstone, and that's it. So now what's going to happen when the gravel drops down is the item is still going to dispense, but then it's going to be immediately picked up by the minecart, meaning that you'll still be able to get shot when you walk onto this observer. So the string is in the Droppers and dispensers are all filled. A backup has been made, game mode survival has been executed, and the epic royalty free music is on. We can enter. As soon as we enter the temple, we fall down, um, and we are presented with a labyrinth. We walk through here, we get shot by some arrows. We can get this book right here. We want to go there, but we cannot anymore. So you have to quickly run around the corner, not get shot by those arrows as we're down to like very very low health. We go through there, put Ancient Wisdom in here, do some parkouring if I manage to. Jump, jump there, here, over there, over there, there we go. Now we need to jump here, here and, and I die. So you can't re-enter, that's the thing. Once you screw up, you cannot really... Oh, you can! You can look! Oh, that's amazing! Amazing, we can still re-enter. Very well. And um, let's go up there, up there. Ooh, ooh, this ladder saved my life. Jump up, up... No! <laughs> oh, man. Um, jump there, jump there. The most difficult part. Yes! Yes, I got under the ladder. Here, go here, go there. Go there, jump there, jump up here, there we go, there we go, we, we've gotten through. I do need to patch this up, but when we get through, some stuff are going to be dispensed. And then we can hear some TNT dispense as well. Run away. And I expected more TNT to be dispensed. If we patched some things, okay. I think one, di one diamond fell down, but- Oh no, 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 no! The TNT is down! Yes! It worked! We can now exit, and we've got our three diamonds with the one lonely diamond just kind of sat down there. Um, but yeah, I am extremely glad with how this has turned out. The Bear Temple, as well as the Finnish Temple, are both going to be archived uh, in a .zip file and available for download with the link down in the description below. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've learned something today. If you have, please do click the like button and comment something nice. And if you really, really want to, please do subscribe. It really helps my channel get out there and make more videos for ya. But this was everything for today. Thank you for watching and see you later.